Hello everyone, welcome to XGen for Beginners series. Here's the final video. And in this video, we are going to focus on how to apply shader, how to render our shader using Arnold Renderer inside Autodesk Maya. So let's get started. We need to apply shader to our groom. So far, it's the default material. I haven't changed it. Um, you know, I haven't applied anything to this yet. If I were to just render on this model, you can see that I'm seeing default material. You may ask Reza, we haven't assigned any material. So where is this coming from? It actually comes from, if I open Hypershade, you can see this better. It comes from the default reserved shader. So we have Lambert 1 as a reserved shader, um, Particle Cloud 1 as a reserved shader. We also have st uh, Shader Glow as a reserved shader, even uh, Standard Surface 1 as a reserved shader. Here, a physical shader is a reserved shader. So the way that this model works is very different to what you need to use, especially when you use Arnold. Arnold makes um, a lot of tasks easier for you. So there is no need to use this default shader. You can use uh, the designated shader from Arnold, which is physically based shader to render hair and fur. And we are, are going to get to that. Now, the question is where to or how to assign shader to the hair. Um, you can you have two ways of doing this. The first way is to go to preview and output and the output settings, the operation should be set to render and the renderer you pick Arnold. Now that's not it. You are just letting the system know that you're about to use Arnold shader. You have to actually go ahead into Arnold setting and apply hair shader. Now this is surprisingly not my favorite way of doing it. If I close the renderer, I tend to go to description, select my description and then do it via the hypershade. Now you can go into create and go to material if you know what type of material you're using or the way I prefer, if I expand this and change the layout a little bit, I actually just press tab and I go AI standard and we have AI standard surface, volumetric and of course hair. And that's what I prefer to use. Of course, another way is to select this, right click on it and go assign new material and then assign that to your material. I'm going to right click on it and go assign material to the viewport. Now we are using proper shader for our groom. If I were to render now, you can see we are getting a different material. Now, so far so good. It was easy. Let's just explore this and see what sort of type of functionality or options do we have to play around with. I'm going to zoom in a little and you can see how nice everything looks. So let's go in here. As a matter of fact, what I can do is to close Hypershade because we don't need this anymore. I'm going to go and open Attribute Editor and Access to AI Standard Shader. And I'm going to toggle that and plug that to our layout fine tune my layout like so. So I have access to um, outliner window, I have access to my render view and I have access to my viewport in case if I want to switch to orthographic view viewports. That's much better. I can even zoom in. And if you think your render takes time, you can always go and select a region and just render a region, it's going to be a lot faster to process or to calculate, you can even go and sort of minimize that to a smaller region just to get faster iteration. Now let's go and explore this hair shader and see what we have 
and what options are available to us to get better results. Now in color rollout, base basically is the brightness of the hair, a multiplier for base color. I tend not to touch that attribute simply because the way that I color the hair is not through the base color, but also, but rather through other options that we're about to explore. Now, melanin is the option that I tend to use to generate natural hair color. So you change the amount of melanin in the hair and you get the range from a blonde. So I can actually lower this to something like 0.2 and all of a sudden you get a blonde hair. Then you can kind of shift that to a brown hair bar going to 0.5 and you can go all the way to one for dark hair. So melanin is the one that I tend to use to get ideal result. Now melanin redness, obviously as the name suggests, controls the redness of the hair. I can kind of dial this down to zero and you can see the amount of red color has been reduced in the hair. You can of course randomize it. So if I bring this one to something like 0 0.05, to get a sort of a blonde looking color and then increase that randomness, it basically randomizes the amount of melanin in the hair fibers and gives it uh, different variations of the color. I'm not sure if that's something that you wanna use unless you go with a super specific look or style. For realistic hair or looking hair, I tend to stay with between 0.2 to 0.9 to get the best result. I can kind of increase that to something like 0.85 with no uh, randomization. Now, uh, roughness controls the reflection and a little bit of transmission. Um, of course, lower value gives you a, a brighter, sharper specular color. So if I go and reduce it to zero, you feel like um, the, the hair is wet, basically, or it's oily, the way that it looks. Um, and the other side of the coin applies. If I set this to 0.5, you completely remove the specularity, which again is really not super realistic. So 0.25 or 0.2 is something that I tend to use for for the most part. And of course we have index of refraction, which is set to 1.55. If you increase that, you, in, you're intensifying the, uh, the amount of specularity with the roughness that you have. So you still can see the roughness is there. It's not, the specularity is not super clean, but you just enhance the amount of reflectivity. Um, something around two to three with melanin and point eight will give you what I called a sort of a natural result. Again, keep that in mind that this roughness plays a huge role. Now for diffuse to work, you can enhance or increase the diffuse value and give it a color. Um, I know that looks a bit silly and realistic. That's why if I were to add color to that, I usually bring it halfway there or something like 0 0.3, 0 0.4. With that, you benefit from what you've already set and you inject a little bit of color to it um, and you take it from there. So you can go with sort of a, um, a, a dye hair stylized looking hair color while you still benefit from IOR, from roughness, so on and so forth. At any point of time, you don't need to reset the diffuse color. If you wanna temporarily deactivate it, just dial down, diffuse and continue with your work. Now, remember this targets diffuse. If you wanna target specularity, then you need to go to tint and that targets the specularity. Again, I don't go full on with the color. I just pick something slightly pinkish and you can see 
it now targets the specularity and overall the look of the um, hair looks more pleasing slightly different look again we've got secondary layer of specularity which i usually um, pick the sort of a darker theme almost in the same color tone and um, that kind of gives you a very nice complementary look but again if uh, that's not what you want you can always dull this one to white right and then enable your um, diffuse instead different looks will give you different result just keep that in mind that this specular tint will scale the primary uh, specular contribution and um, that the second specular tint will um, change the or alter the transmission contribution that takes us to the end of this series thank you very much for following along for taking this journey with me in this nine long segments um, i hope you found this series useful let me know in the comments uh, below how you did tag me um, in your projects if you make one i put the entire project on patreon including uh, all the you know the scene files all the descriptions the expressions that i may have so if you feel like dropping by and supporting reza i highly appreciate that thank you very much again until the next series see you guys soon